Welcome back to another episode of Cultivating Change, everyone. I'm your host, Alex Corey, and today's guest is by chance and circumstance, as my uh, recent guests happen to be. This is a fellow regular at the Yellow Mug Cafe in Weaverville, North Carolina, and anyone around the Asheville, North Carolina area will probably know it. It's a meeting place for everyone. It's a fantastic little cafe, and Brandon was at the bar chatting one day and I just went up and struck up conversation and he happened to be a Qigong and Tai Chi instructor, have a long history with that. And that was exactly what I needed at that point in my daily progression towards recovery, rhythm and recuperation instead of just consistently beating my body down, which I still do plenty of. So this goes through Brandon's story of his finding Eastern moving meditations and all of the twists and turns that go with it. Enjoy this podcast with Brandon Quinn. Thanks for doing this, Brandon. Yeah, thank you. So the best part about you helping me slow down, which is kind of the main thing I came to Tai Chi and Qigong for is that it rippled into all other parts of my life Yes. where my brain has such a hard time, even with basic meditation, uh-huh. it has a hard time sitting in stillness. So I use a mantra or something to give it to, to attach to mm-hmm. so that it eventually gets bored yeah. and then I actually enjoy the benefits. So this has actually been that for me so in the morning or in the evening everything we've been going over has really helped me to in if i know that you know if i've had a busy day and i'm still getting rid of all that energy and trying to quiet down the slow synchronized practices that you've been showing me act as that meditation where i don't have to just sit in stillness when everything is still buzzing yeah it helps me it gives my brain something to pay attention to, yeah. form, mm-hmm. and slowness, mm-hmm. and rhythm, and all that. So there's plenty to, to entertain my my yeah. chatty brain, uh-huh. but it still slows the energy down. How did you? I, I we've chatted a couple of of times, and I've gotten bits and pieces about your your story. I came to it from this point in my life when I needed something to help me balance out resistance training and mm-hmm. all the beatdown. Everyone has, I imagine, a very different story of how they find the the Eastern movement mm-hmm. meditations, which I love how you put that. Mm-hmm. How did you find it? Uh, when I was 20, I had a head injury that put me in the hospital for a month. And it just completely destroyed me, uh, brought me down very low. Uh, by 23, I got in a gym and tried to do some exercises, swim in, whatever, but they had a Qigong class at the gym. So I started taking that and started uh, worked with that teacher, started meeting other teachers through the course of my life and training in different ways, but all in the Chinese systems. Uh, and started exploring meditation through it too. And uh, that's really uh, when I discovered that I had no equilibrium. I had no cognition i had nothing then that's the ground zero that you start building back up from Uh, and that it took that to make me wake up and realize you know the importance of these practices and not you know not just if you're ill or if you're sick but just the preventative medicine behind it yeah i love that how long between is for sure preventative medicine and yeah Mm -hmm. i i came to it by most people's standards i probably wouldn't have been you know on one end of the extreme but i've dealt with adrenal fatigue enough Mm -hmm. where i was like okay i need to have something clearly i won't stop beating my body down i do Mm -hmm. like resistance training i do like running i like uh stressing myself out but without that other end of it it's just all leading up to adrenal fatigue and i will make myself basically incapacitated for a week <laughs> yeah, and just yeah. like my level of productivity my level of cognition my level of like 
wanting to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So this was my, I need to do something on a daily basis to counteract that. I can't wait three weeks and no. just push myself uh -huh. and then recover. No. I have to actively recover every day. Well, that's the misperception in the West we have. We're taught from day one in school, give it 100%, give it 100%. Right. But uh, actually, there's a real saying in China that give it 70%. Yeah. That you're regu you need to regulate your body. You don't need to push your body into the ground. Now, granted, that there are times and places, I mean, I've gone through conditionings mm. before, but there are times and places for that. But for really majority of your life, you need to learn to regulate your body if you're going to be healthy. Yes. It's about maintaining balance. You don't want to over push your body. You don't want to underdo your body. Right. You want to find, uh, you know, that middle ground yeah. where things harmonize. Yes. You know? Yeah, uh, that's a good way to put it. Harmony is key. Mm -hmm. so I interrupted your, your story. So how long from when you found it to when you started seeing all of the other sort of from when you found Qigong, did meditation, mm -hmm. how long was that? How long did that take you to, to get introduced to the other forms? Well, I started it when I was 23 and just through... Of course, the life of reading and studying and going to teachers and uh, I was, I would say I was more into the Zen mm -hmm. uh, school of meditation for a long time and it just started incorporating other systems uh, later in life. But for the most part, uh, you know, the Chinese systems seem to really regulate me because it's, you know, you know, what I've been teaching you is based a lot on grounding and how to ground yourself. Mm -hmm. You're treating your body like it's an electrical system, which it is. Right. And uh, like with Ohm's law and electrical work, uh, less resistance, more current. Right. Our basic instinct is to tense up and yeah. to overdrive. And But if you learn, it's literally a discipline to let go of the tension in your body when it starts getting to... Uh, too high yeah. because stiff turns you into a punching bag yep yeah yep and that's that's what i bump into cyclically every couple of weeks or months mm -hmm. if i don't regulate i will just everything will be tense yep. i will feel like i did an intense workout the day before all the muscles will be sore but i didn't mm -hmm. and that's a problem and it's you know no amount of stretching seems to get rid of those like deep repetitive uh -huh. contractions like yeah, it takes yeah. days yeah. to get through that but it's actually been my recovery has been drastically increased mm -hmm. since since we started oh, working together good. yeah that's yeah. been amazing yeah it's learning when to release it yeah and learn you know i can feel it when everything in me is rising up and yes. it's like a thermometer. The tension and the stress is like a thermometer rising. But the more you can bring it back down through your feet, the more you can ground it in your stomach. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, while you're driving a car or doing this and that, right. it's hard to do, you know, a full full throttle practice in that. But the point is, is to become automatic and mm -hmm. that your nervous system automatically remembers and automatically responds right. so what this is doing is retraining your nervous system between the automatic nervous mm -hmm. system and your regular nervous system yeah i like that yeah. um you mentioned chinese systems mm -hmm. so those are predominantly which uh i started with qigong mm -hmm. moved into tai chi mm -hmm. uh studied some pakwa mm -hmm. uh, i had four one-on-one -on -one lessons with a uh, really brilliant Kung Fu instructor. Oh, wow. But he was from Peru, which is good because what happened is during the Chinese revolutions, all the old Kung Fu instructors were being killed. So they went to Borneo and they went to South America, they went to Peru, and that's where oh. they had to hide. But that is the best way to get the purest tradition is people oh, that live in South American countries, which I was really grateful for Augie, uh, the guy that instructed me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it just for one for one on ones improved me immensely. So wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the primary difference that you see between Qigong and Tai Chi? Uh, Qigong, you're getting more into the medical work of it. Uh, you know, Qigong, uh, you know, can be a martial practice. 
Uh, really, I mean, every time you hear that word gong or, you know, kung fu, it has to do with time and energy. Conserving your time and conserving your energy. Mm. Uh, those are, you know, that is work. That That's right. what work right. as a math formula yep. would be is time plus energy. Right. But how do you conserve your time and energy to be more of an efficient worker? And not just in oh. your work, but in all life. Right. Whether you're walking or washing the dishes or you're sweeping the floor, that is kung fu. You're, you know, so it's really a lot of the same principles just on, and in Pakwa, you're not really focusing too much on linear forms or movements that are very circular and very curved. Mm. Uh, even in physics, the quickest distance between two points is not a line. If you do the math, it's a curve. Interesting. But the curve, curve stepping is the quickest, quickest way uh, around things. Okay. So Pakwa is more the sister art. It's not quite yin or, or yang. And then Tai Chi differs how so? Uh, modern Tai Chi, as in taught in America, is very yin. Very yin-based, slow-moving, soft, watery sort of motion. And yin is more yielding. Yeah, so a yielding okay. art. And uh, the opposite would be? Yang, which is fiery, punching, kicking, gotcha. that sort of thing. Yep. But, you know, really... The whole goal in the systems, to me, and what's helped me the most is learning not to be leaning over on one side mm -hmm. or the other. And this even gets into the, how your brain works. Your mm -hmm. left side's more logical, your right side's more emotional. But if one is overreacting more than the other, you're going to have imbalances. And this is where a lot of personality faults come from, is people are leaning two side on one side mm -hmm. more than the other. That's me, 100%. So I'm definitely, even though I should, uh, I should focus more on the yin mm. and on the right brain, or yeah. at least balancing it. I am yeah. very engineering, very logical, uh -huh. very analytical, very left brain, and I'm also very fiery. Fiery. So just yep. hyper productive, yep. type A, yeah, yeah, I constantly that. spending yeah. energy. <laughs> and this has been the best thing because it's helped me at least. Increase the amount of crosstalk yeah, between my yeah. hemispheres. Especially, the one thing that I figured out on our first couple of lessons was how terrible or unsynchronized I was. Yeah. I've never been a good dancer and I've never mm -hmm. tried to progress because I have zero rhythm and I'm very unsynchronized. Mm -hmm. But I think I mentioned too, I went to a, um, a dance the other, other night last weekend. And I still don't know how to dance, uh -huh. but all I did, uh -huh. A, it was an ecstatic dance, which means no one cares. Yeah. No one's looking at you. Everyone's doing whatever they want. So that's a good place to practice. All I did was started doing the movements uh -huh. and just picturing energy moving because that's what dancing is. Mm -hmm. But it took away a lot of the pressure. And I eventually, it took a minute or so, but eventually did slip back into a decent rhythm. Mm -hmm. So the practices have helped my hemispheres mm -hmm. tremendously yep. uh, and it's nice to be able to give myself permission to just look like an absolute idiot while I'm learning uh. <laughs> <laughs> which is I think the problem most people who don't know how to dance have mm -hmm. is there's you know you can feel people watching you and there's no one yeah. wants to look like a fool but if everyone looks like a fool then it's that's what ecstatic dancing is yeah, like there's yeah. no real form no, no. everyone's just as as they feel and that's uh that that was super helpful. Well, say, you know, like on a dance floor, why people get hung up so much is because they don't quite know what to do or when to do it. Right. But that's the big principle in Tai Chi is the what and when of things. What do I need to be doing and when do I need to be doing it? Timing. It's your timing and everything, yeah. which is a sense. You can't teach somebody that. You can't right. teach, you can give them a practice that will help enhance that, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, you can't teach somebody that or show somebody that it has to be found on their own right but you can give them practices in which you can push them towards that way yeah. yeah so after you had learned um the meditative side of it after finding those mm -hmm. two practices anything else you were exposed to or how did you deepen your your practice how did you actually uh, learn all of the foundation what was it just a consistent class schedule or did you have a mentor uh, there, there's been a good handful of mentors in my life. There's gonna, been a wall of them, actually, that have uh, educated me a lot. My old father-in-law from my last, from my old marriage, 
uh, he studied under Dr. Yang Min Jin, and uh, I had a horrible shoulder injury. It shattered the whole shoulder and almost was about to be amputated. And he came up from Atlanta, and he spent time with me uh, with some more medical Qigong. And then on top of that, I found a, uh, a woman that did an old system of acupuncture that worked on me, and I got 100% use of my arm back. Wow. Very grateful for that. But it yeah. took work. It took a long, long time of work to get it fully functioning again. Yeah. Are there is there anything that you try to do every day to maintain that range of motion or uh I try to, you know, keep shoulder rotations yeah. and uh lately I've been more asymmetric pressing the right hand against mm-hmm. the left hand where there's a series of mudras I do with that yeah. that help. But uh any other practices in general, not specifically for your shoulder, that help you regulate yourself? Uh Grounding's crucial for me. I have such a speedy brain. Mm. If I don't do grounding techniques, I'm a little off. Uh, to say the older I've become, yeah, when I was younger, it was all about, you know, grounding and an inward look at, to see what's going on and to observe your thoughts. And don't, don't pay it, don't engage them, but mm. let the thoughts pass just each truth that might come up be like a passing cloud, mm-hmm. so to speak. But the older I got, I've really gained a lot of benefit because of really bad traumatic situations that I've been in mm-hmm. where you feel trapped, you already feel pent too much up in the inside, is to put the mind as far away from the body as possible, even get up on the parkway, look as far into the distance as possible and that's when mantra work comes in really handy to say the mantra but to be looking as far away from yourself as possible it's all a gauge where there you know your attention is coming from being too inward looking or too outward looking and finding that balance between the two and that's the big thing with the tai chi practice is it's balancing your inner world and your outer world so you're not too much in either of them Interesting. Because that's another source of bad mental illness. It's like you're going to be too stuck in your head yeah. or you're going to be, you know, too too out that nobody's, yeah, you're going to be difficult to deal with. Right. And yeah, I, yeah. I can see the one of the extremes. I've had a history of depression and anxiety, which mm-hmm. are just polar ends of the same coin. But I can... <clears throat> go, all my energy will go up in my head and just ruminate and spiral and that's anxiety basically and the only things that have helped i have to um well ground but bring my energy back down into my body so if i feel myself i used to have a history of panic attacks and Mm -hmm. depression uh probably similarly to you in college that meditation got me out of but the only thing that's worked for me to get out of sort of a spiral like that is immediate kind of like uh, if you're having an allergic reaction, to like throw yourself in an ice bath. So mm-hmm. just to snap your body yeah. out of it, I will have to sprint, run, regardless of the weather, do some jump squats, literally anything to shock my the body and bring it back into my body well, so it stops that spiral. That's what, you remember one of the days when we were talking about grief and anger that yeah. we were working together? Yeah. Uh, that's when... I started developing that after I was engaged to a woman mm-hmm. standing under an overhang at Waffle House. And she called me. And I picked up the phone to answer. And immediately when I answered, a lightning bolt came out and hit the overhang. And I dock. I got to the lowest ground as possible. But the radiation still went through the receiver into my left hemisphere. And... It passed. I thought everything was okay, but I actually did alter me a little in my left hemisphere. But what I found from it is I kept stay persistent with the Tai Chi and the Qigong. But what started occurring uh, there was this repetitive motion I kept doing, which I found out was identical to how a thunder cloud works. It sends a sprite up. It sends lightning down at the same time. Uh, somehow I was mimicking the essence of a thundercloud, but the motions that I was using while doing this is identical to what would help with, uh, you know, if your hands are straight up, that's your lungs and that's a grief center. 
and then coming back down the liver and the kidneys, you're pushing out anger. So all that I've been processing in that time period, and you know, taken for granted, you know, it was a, it was a scary thing, yeah. yeah, to get struck by lightning or at least get the side struck through the phone, but to manage uh, it, 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 that's the miracle of Qigong is no matter what situation, good or bad, there is a mode of expressing it. There is a mode of making it pragmatic. Mm -hmm. There is a mode of taking what is, uh, you know, somewhat, you know, in an abstract state, but then making it physical, manifest, and pragmatic. Yep. You know, if we just stay in an abstract sort of state of concept, then it's very vain. It doesn't benefit anybody. <laughs> right. But if you can bring it back down to earth into a, a container or a concrete practice like Qigong or Tai Chi, then there is a benefit to it. Yeah. When I, and as far as I'm still getting through the, the fact that it's so, it, it is extremely concrete. Mm -hmm. My body will feel like I did a full workout after a full session. Yeah. There is no, like my legs are equally as shaky mm -hmm. as if I did. Yep. A it's leg slow. day, it's general. but it's so it's much slower, yeah. and it's a, my brain doesn't really understand that because yeah. there was no impact or you know I wasn't doing a leg press with mm -hmm. three hundred pounds, but just the f attempting to keep symmetry, mm -hmm. form, timing, all of the stabilizers mm -hmm. are exhausted, it's, and maybe if I practiced longer each day. But. It's making it's making our mind think one one rhythm one motion yeah. one beat just like bam you're there everything's working unison mm -hmm. with, hey all your thoughts your emotions and your intention uh, your actions thoughts emotions actions are no longer separated they're one thing they're hitting the nail on the head at one time right a little more congruous yeah yeah it's definitely a flow state like mm -hmm. those things are usually descriptive of surfing. I have mountain biking. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, as in if you're not present with it, if all of those things aren't aligned, you're probably gonna crash. Mm -hmm. Like in mountain biking, you'll no, just you're not, your mind's gone. And the, right. you know, they tell they to say that in fighting. Yeah. You know, you see fighters, uh, you know, talk banner back and forth to each other. It's psychological. If I can get your thoughts or emotions mm -hmm. off kilter, then I got you. Right. You know. Yeah, and I didn't expect that of of this practice that it would be such a flow state. But yeah, and yeah, teaches I mean, you how to guard your mind, you know, so nobody mm -hmm. can do that to you, right? To throw you off that kilter, you know. Did you ever see Harry Potter the series? No, I never watched it. There's a one of the books I think Professor Snape was. Uh, it was towards the end of the series when it was starting to get dark, and the main character Harry mm -hmm. Potter was basically having mind guarding training so that his nemesis. Yeah. Voldemort couldn't get into his mind remotely. Yeah, so yeah. same thing. So uh, it, yeah, at it seems like that is a a lost practice. Yep. Stoicism kind of touches on that. So mm -hmm. the that ancient practice of a lot of people see the uh, the cold hard shell of Stoicism, but one of the core components is basically just teaching you how to be in control and to guard your mind. Yep. Yeah. Not let someone else's actions or verbiage. Yeah elicit something from you yeah yeah more importantly guard your heart that's what it is the mind mind has its function it, you know that it, it is the but it, to me all of our thoughts and ideas are really coming from the heart in the mm. first place that's mm. where it's stimulated from uh, you know yeah i'm sure a lot of people that that's a touchy subject just because yeah and i'm still getting into just a heart awareness yeah heart awareness and it is it's a very odd concept mm -hmm. if you're coming from a normal or logical perspective because yeah. we don't ever think of our heart being a functioning organ. Yeah. We think of it being a pump. We don't think of it having its own electromagnetic field, its own... Um, nervous system. Yeah, no, everything. It's, its it, own functioning organism. It, it has its own nervous system and it has its own... Uh, you know, its own mind, mm. uh, even down in the stomach, the neuropeptides uh, are distributed automatically. is isn't that your brain is telling you right. to distribute neuropeptides. It's just naturally happening. Right. They go to the internal organs as needed on their own as because that stomach has its own neuro mind. Yeah. 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 The, the science around 
the microbiome and just how important our gut is is mm. just getting started. Like oh, within yeah, the last just, ten years, right? Microbiome is still a new subject. It's way more popular now since uh -huh. I started digging into the health field, but it seems like we should know more about it, giving all, given all these ancient practices who have already dug through and figured out how critical each system is, but uh, our Western mind tends to not play with concepts like that unless there's like mechanistic science behind it, where yeah. there doesn't necessarily need to be. No, if, uh -uh. Right, for it to be practical and useful. You don't, you don't need to wait 10 years for literature to catch up if no. all of these ancient practices already yeah, address they just, the... They just found out recently that Plato was right when he talked about the earth, uh, the material in the earth being a cube. Mm. You know, people, modern science, you know, they pay attention to Greek some, but, you know, they're just now through math and science, you know, catching up to the fact that Plato was right, that the, the earth particles do have a cubical shape and they're very unstable and they're constantly shifting and moving. Right. But you know. Yeah, we, we tend to disregard all of the work that a lot of the classics, yeah. the classic we instruction... Don't, we don't want to pay attention to it. Or I think what part of the problem is, and it's not so much a problem, just a perspective issue, is <clears throat> we have no way to adapt or we're figuring out ways to adapt it to our current understandings, as in yeah. there has to be a bridge, yeah. and yeah. we work under such a reductionist, um, billiard, um, reductionist model of mm. physics and things like that, that it doesn't immediately play with or entangle all the classical ideas, or we, we think they didn't have as much information, therefore there's no real point in integrating it but right they just had a different frame of reference yep right or a different language. all those old systems there's always i mean since the beginning of time there's a cause and effect of things right. always been a cause and effect of things right, right. that's never changed right. but it's just you know, societal uh you know the way society changes changes the way we perceive it you know and especially in this rapid rapid age and you know that's becoming harder to be able to connect to that. Do you think, <clears throat> you mentioned rapid age and it, it really is, it's almost, <clears throat> almost creates like a split or a bifurcation in my psyche at least, coming out of a Tai Chi or Qigong mm -hmm. session and then shifting your paradigm, having to go right back into busy work, yeah. into the grind of, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I kind of put that on myself because I do so many things at once uh, just because I'm interested in so many things at once. Yeah. So my own blessing and my own curse. But it's a hard shift. And like last night, I was observing a, a fairly intense um, meditative ceremony. And it's it's like when you first learn yoga. For anyone who's done that, that might be more common practice where it takes a couple of hours mm -hmm. for your system to speed back up to catch up with the pulse of work oh, and yeah. everything that's going yeah. on and it's not always a good thing like i would no. like to keep it in that low rhythmic uh more more balanced no goodness it'll about kill you gosh right. when i had a job one time worked me a 48 hour shift and uh, i had to go to an herbalist to get a special kind of tea just to shut my automatic nervous yeah. system what, because what type of tea was that? that ah, I can't remember. It has some lettuce that I had. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. 48s. I about that's needed a horse tranquilizer after that. But uh, no, the, it's just the way corporate America is set up will yeah. push you into the ground and they'll about kill you. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. Well, and people end up spending a ton of money on anything that will help them downregulate their mm -hmm. nervous system so yeah. usually it's harder drugs we're than tea we're constantly going up and we're coming yeah. down and we never find the middle and that's why we get sick right because we're not regulating anything you know we're just either going to one extreme or the other and there's never in between right you know? yeah and these practices are good in between especially mm -hmm. um, i even find morning is my best time mm -hmm. to practice them just because i'm not thinking about anything yet no so i can really pay attention to it's the perfect time for yep. it 
it's right before the sun comes up that's when yin's changing into yang and that's the most ideal time to do some of these things is because it's not quite there it's not quite there right you're just you know the moon's not quite gone away and the sun's not come up so you have a, a real good opportunity to tap into a very to me when i wake up 4 35 in the morning and it's very embryonic kind of state mm. where you're okay with your thoughts you're okay with your thinking you're okay with who you are you know and there's really you're not putting judgment on yourself quite yet so it's a very innocent place to be in order to start uh processing some of this stuff yeah that's i love the way you put that yeah, yeah the transitory phases of mm. of the earth trying to be in synchronous yeah. right so you know that's would dusk be the same the transition yeah. the other way yeah i would say you know it holds very special benefit yeah, so, yeah. interesting if someone wanted to get inspired from any of these moving meditations what did you find when you i know you had some classes but do you know of any of any teachers who have material easily accessible for if someone wanted to start playing with it and they weren't in Asheville, north carolina where we are what would do you recommend like someone doing in-person classes or are there some ways that you can tiptoe into it online by yourself to sort of I start would, playing i would say get a teacher in person because i remember i used uh, you know when i was younger trying to teach myself a tai chi form yeah. out of a bulk yeah no clue right. i got really airy really dreamy really sort of not grounded very not it, it was a horrible feeling what i experienced be careful you don't you need a teacher to guide you in this because and just even the basic posturing, you can hurt your knees, you can mm -hmm. hurt your back, you True. can hurt a lot of, you know, you can hurt yourself. And, yeah. you know, especially psychologically, if you're letting the mind, uh, because it is such a slow pace, you don't know really what you're supposed to be paying attention to in that process, right. you know. Good point. Yeah, because yeah, my mind will go all over the place. And I remember, I think I told you, maybe after our third session, um, I found so I had an encounter with the amount of energy that I was moving mm -hmm. when I started doing the movements. You just cloud hands more mm -hmm. quickly, yeah. and you're just like, mm. no, no, slow down, slow down. <laughs> right. You got to walk before you run, right? Because you know? it it did. Uh, it built ex within like five or ten seconds. The mm -hmm. amount of like my body got extremely warm, mm -hmm. breathing quickened, and it escalated very quickly. Yeah. So if, if I was just playing with that without any instruction, yeah, my knees would, there's an incredible amount of torque on joints if you don't watch yeah, it correctly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So breath work is also a very, that's what the thing that I, I like most about it mm -hmm. was again with the meditation. Sometimes I have difficulty just sitting and mm -hmm. focusing on breath work even something simple like box breathing yeah. like four in hold four out four something as simple as that but integrating the breath work mm -hmm. much like yoga the problem i have with yoga is i'm just not that flexible mm -hmm. and you know it's hard to tell if you're doing if your angles are correct or if you're in the same yeah, yeah. patterns you can much like tai chi yeah true yeah. so this I can do it in front of a mirror and just sort of make sure that I'm symmetrical, symmetrical. and it integrates the breath work mm -hmm. because it forces you to slow down. Yep. Or if, you know, I want to speed up a little bit, if I'm trying mm -hmm. to energize myself, then I can do that too. But it works so perfectly with all the aspects of introspection that I want to play with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What have, where are you now with the practices? So what have you, what's the most beneficial things you've taken from it so if you had to look back in or in the next 10 years if you look back like what is the most benefit that you've pulled from it the the most benefit oh uh, it i'm 100 percent healthier and happier uh, mm. than what i used to be those are huge considering <laughs> been through a lot of violent situations in my time yeah and uh, if it wasn't for an outlet to take that raw base negativity and then switch it transmute it into something positive something compassionate something loving and if you don't know 
how to do that, then it will destroy you, and it will destroy you. So in order to take those base raw, really delusional emotions, and then transmute them into something loving and compassionate has been the biggest strength that I've encountered. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great place to end. And uh, I will put your contact information below this video and podcast everywhere. If someone's in, we are in uh, Vintage Kava at the moment in Weaverville, North Carolina. And that's where I usually do my sessions. But if you're in Western North Carolina and you would like an in-person uh, Qigong Tai Chi, I cannot recommend you enough. So I'd be happy to, to facilitate that. But we will probably do this again. And hopefully I'll be better at Tai Chi and Qigong by okay. the time we do this again. Yeah. But thank you very much for thank your time. You. Thanks for sticking to the end, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I certainly did. If you'd like to get in touch with Brandon, if you are a local to Western North Carolina, Asheville or Weaverville area, he does have a few spots open for uh, in-person sessions. I will put his email and phone number below. He does not do social media and stays off of the web for the most part. I'm slowly heading in that direction. That's the, the trajectory to just be invisible and to just live grounded, but until then, I am everywhere. Uh, please share this and like if you found it of some value, and I will see you next week. Thank you.